Hi, I'm Eric Ford for Made Here. In This Together, produced by the Vermont Folklife Center and directed by Ned Castle, is part of the Folklife Center's School Transformation Project, which documents the new public school focus on student-centered, personalized, and proficiency-based learning. In This Together profiles the classroom of a social studies educator, Joe Rivers, in Brattleboro, Vermont, including work on a podcast about local history. Don't miss other films from Ned Castle and the Vermont Folklife Center on broadcast or streaming online at vermontpbs.org. Enjoy the film, and thanks for watching. Social studies is about studying what's around you and finding out how you fit in what's around you in this big world we're in. And that's a question that we're all trying to answer forever. Being involved in that with kids uh, at their age when they're coming into middle school and they're thinking a lot about themselves, but they're also seeing what the big world is starting to look like to them. And so I enjoy trying to be the, the person who helps them figure out where they fit. One of the things I really want to focus on in eighth grade is the Constitution. That's the foundation of how the rules work. Uh, that, that was an eye-opener when I was in middle school when they taught me the Constitution. I said, wow, so this is the way it's supposed to work. And then part of the reality is that you learn that this is the way it's supposed to work but the stories that we're hearing say that it's not always working that way. And so that's the, the rub and you, that's what we try to examine. Today, my goal is to go around and just see how everybody's doing. And then we talked about how it's a living document and that means it can change and the amendments are basically changing the Constitution. There's 27 of them. Uh, so let's look at them, and so that's the first thing they did was just look at them and say, okay, let's find some themes. We found seven or eight themes built within that, and so the kids you know, individually picked a theme, and then I said, okay, at the end we're going to do a presentation. Do you want to go first? No, you can go first. Okay, um, I'm working on the 14th and 19th Amendment having to do with women's rights, and right now I'm making my slideshow about it. And now there's an equal protection clause, and so everyone has the same rights. And then in the 19th Amendment, women go, got to vote, so it's pretty cool. We're using Chromebooks, and so I do some talking in the front of the room, but then I step back here and spend a lot of my time in the back of the room because I can see everybody's screen and I can see how people are moving or they're not moving, how engaged they are, if they're struggling, and then I can go in and find out what's going on for them. You can add music into Adobe Spark for your thing, and I'm trying to figure out which one's the best one. If you wanted to get something that was connected to Brattleboro, you could pull off a Fats Waller recording of, uh, he was recording in like 1918, 1919, all the way up until like 26, and he was using uh, an SD organ when he was doing it. That would be cool, huh? And, if, and the great thing about technology is that uh, I don't know much, but the kids do. And so a lot of what I'm doing with this project is asking kids to be the teachers around the, the platform and showing each other. Uh, the platforms we're using this time are specifically not anything we've used before. See my writing down there? I see it. Yes. It's not here. This is. No, it goes away after I highlight it. You know, we're supposed to be focusing on reading, writing, speaking, listening, research, uh, presenting the information, making a good argument. So all those things can happen with technology. Before the 14th Amendment was updated, only African Americans got equal rights, not including women. During the 1970s, women had finally gotten the same rights as everyone else, and those rights were added on to the 14th Amendment. You know, content is certainly driving what we're doing, but as much as it is content, it's about creativity, it's about stretching, it's about trying to find a different place to be with the presentation. 
platform. The 14th and 19th Amendments made it possible today for all women to have equal rights. Women's rights are emphasized in Amendments 14 and 19. You gotta figure out if, if it's due Wednesday, how are you gonna get there? So be thinking about that as you head to that next class. Uh, a few years ago, part of Act 77, there was this provision built into it where we were supposed to provide flexible pathways, grades 7 through 12. So how can you apply the idea that you're going to go in a flexible way and still earn credit and all that in middle school when you're still trying to build foundational skills to be successful in high school? So that's a real dilemma and a problem with the law. Schools are doing lots of different things to try to address that. All right, so this one's about uh, Fowler in those octagon houses. Yeah, I know a lot. That we talked all about. Place-based learning is a big part of my practice. And so I became involved in the local historical society with the intent of bringing that to the kids and having the kids become a part of something bigger than themselves. Okay. Uh, in the mid-1800s, the Wesselhoff Water Cure was a health spa in Brattleboro that attracted many famous people. And so they do things like they do a podcast and a radio show uh, that is weekly called This Week in Brattleboro History. The three octagon houses in Brattleboro have been taken down and life has moved on. Some societal innovations do not survive the scrutiny of time. Time old. Time old. Time old. Are you ready? 100%. No. Alright, we're on. Okay. In the mid 1800s, the Wesselhoff water cure was a. In the mid 1800s, the wet. Well, <laughs> okay. In the mid 1800s, the Wesselhoff water cure was a health spot in Brattleboro. Uh, we're given this block of 30 minutes uh, every other day for that amount of time, and that group is determined by their skill level. And so students who do not need to be working on their reading, writing, or math skills are the ones who are in this group that are working on uh, the historical society adjunct stuff. Some societal innovations do not survive the scrutiny of time. Phrenology and octagon houses are two examples. It's time for This Week in Brattleboro History. In the mid-1800s, the Wesselhoff water cure was a health spot in Brattleboro that attracted many famous people, well-known visitors like Harriet Beecher Stowe. When I was a youngster, a long time ago, I grew up in Bennington, and I had a teacher who I really enjoyed. Uh, her name was Jessica Howard, uh, and she had an approach, she called it emergent learning. Uh, she first tried to set up a classroom that was one that she felt comfortable in and she thought would be an environment where her kids could learn and then she tried to set the parameters around content and behavior, and then she uh, let us go and chase our, chased our passions. That's, that's what we were doing. And I realize this is out of our comfort zone, so if, it, if you stumble a little bit, it's okay to then stop. I was in second and third grade, so it was a while ago. When I started teaching and looked back on it, I thought, wow, that, of all the ways you can be a teacher, that's, that's a pretty right. good one. Very good, very good. I think the pendulum has swung again. It keeps going back and forth. And I'm not sure that everything that's in Act 77, uh, as it's being applied, is, is necessarily good. Uh, I think the intents are good. I think it focuses so much on the individual that we lose the sense of community. Screen time by yourself is not the same as community. So if there's a word, you know, the word I, I choose to, to hang my hat on is reciprocity. And that's the idea that we are in this together. That when I'm teaching, I certainly have goals. And you as the student, you're here and you have goals too. Let's figure it out together. What's the give and take? Are you going to narrate during it? It's already, so yeah. It's so already it talks narrated. to us? Right. In my voice. Oh, yeah. Right. Wow. I have been working on the 14th and 19th Amendments of Women's Rights. The 14th and 19th Amendments made it possible today for all women to have equal rights. The Third Amendment was created in 1789. It stated that in a time of peace, no soldier, which means anyone in the army, cannot come into your house and kick you out of it 
in order to live in your house, which is what the British did. And I'm Cassie. Uh, next one. Uh, the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment was written originally for the safety of slaves and African Americans. The hashtag MeToo movement has made its way through news outlets. Um, women have been speaking up about sexual harassment and assault going on in Hollywood. Vermont's pretty unique in that it's really big into local control. The Agency of Education has some power in our state, but especially around proficiencies, it's all recommendations. The actual control was, is, in, is within each school district. How they're going to interpret proficiencies, how they're going to require students to meet the proficiencies, what proficiencies they're going to pick. And so proficiencies is hard to define statewide because each district gets to do it their own way. There's a lot of diversity that's growing from this particular initiative that uh, leaves a lot of open-ended questions around how it's going to play out. Without a lot of direction around professional development, districts are just doing it in very different ways. We can really do with it what we want. We're writing the scripts, we're researching ourselves. Load images into our the Brattleboro Historical Society Facebook page. And Instagram, and uh, what's the other one? YouTube. Oh yeah, we got a YouTube channel. Yeah, we have a YouTube channel. Uh -huh, yeah. Our thing is about a train wreck that happened and it killed a bunch of people. There was this communications mix up on the Central Vermont Railroad's part and so this crash happened. All right, and then where's everybody else with their stuff? Right. Juliana, where do you, you're doing the clarina? Yeah. Probably did, but, oh look, I found it. Here it is. Look at that. So what's at stake in middle school is kids future. They come to us as young kids who many of them are still very influenced by their parents and in a couple years they're going to be heading to high school which is a very different sort of person than when you leave sixth grade. There's this old uh, Billy Joel album, uh, The Stranger, and in that song it talks about how you wear different masks and you try them on and you try to figure out who you're going to be in the future. What's your personality going to be like? And I think middle school is a lot of that. Kids trying on different masks, different personalities, different versions of themselves and then seeing how people react to that. And so I want to try to be a constant for them to bounce those things off from and give them some parameters, some boundaries to be successful academically and socially. I like socializing with people and working with other people. And yeah, like, I mean, we do work, but I think that people should do more work in school when like you have a good time while doing it. And I can do that in this skills block. Project-based learning is, uh, it resonates more. Uh, the memories that the kids have seem to stick with them longer. So it's really impressive like how much the town has like transformed even in just like 30 years it's like drastically drastically changed and like kids in our generation who live here don't think of like Brattleboro in the way that like like a lot of inspirational people came from here and there were a lot of inspirational people who lived here. It's really made me appreciate Brattleboro a lot more I guess because um, I really like stories I really like telling and hearing stories and like, it's amazing to me how many stories this town has to tell. Do you think this is something that should happen all throughout the school or all throughout Vermont or something like that? Like, do you think it should be uh, carried on? Like, yeah, carried on at a mass level. Well, Outside. It's like it's a pretty quiet place, small. I guess. Yeah, it's just a little small town. And I feel like, I mean, this prad this podcast and this class, like, it's let me appreciate Brattleboro a lot more. And I feel like people should appreciate, yeah. like, where yes. they live and where they come from. And I feel like something like this everywhere would help people do that.
Vermont PBS, partnering with local filmmakers to bring you stories made here. For more, visit vermontpbs.org.